NBA Jam and Mortal Kombat are two series that could not be further apart, but are intrinsically linked. Not just because they were developed by the same company and incorporated the same type of digitization, and not just because Mortal Kombat characters appeared in NBA Jam Tournament Edition before the NBA had a conniption over it, but also because of their shared spirit of mystery and discovery that they brought to the arcades of the 90s. And one of the most pervasive mysteries of those dimly lit rooms, perhaps the most conspicuous absence in all of gaming history, Michael Jordan, the man synonymous with basketball at the height of his career, missing from the NBA's flagship game. I'm sure you know by now this is just a case of business deals making the world a little less fun. But that didn't stop the rumor mill from doing what it does, and in fact there might actually be some validity to those old rumors. Because you see, there does in fact exist a version of NBA Jam that contains Michael Jordan. And it's not a mod and it's not a ROM hack, but instead an official version that was made by Midway. Can we see it? Nah. But for today's video, let's discuss what we do know about it. This video is sponsored by Tommy John. If I wear underwear, it's gotta be real soft, and this underwear that I got from Tommy John is real soft. The material is so nice that when I'm wearing it, I can't stop touching it until I realize, hey, it's kinda weird to keep touching your underwear. It's a lot more comfortable than the underwear I was wearing before, which is important considering I barely leave the house anymore, and I just live in my underwear at home now. They also sent me one of their second skin crewnecks, which is just as soft as well as the lounge pants that I'm wearing right now. The website is easy to navigate and you can choose what you like best and see which shape suits you the most. You can get packs of three or six or individuals if you want as well as loungewear mix and match. Just click the link in my description and use code WANG for up to 20% off and free shipping on your first pack of Tommy Johns. To be honest, when I was a kid, I hated Michael Jordan. Let me explain. You see, in the short window of time when I actually followed basketball, I was a Knicks fan. Patrick Ewing and John Starks, those are my guys. And it seemed like every single year in the playoffs, it was Michael Jordan and his Chicago Bulls who knocked them out of the playoffs and robbed me of my dreams. Now, even though I haven't watched basketball in years, I'm, I still feel myself getting tight looking at these pictures. So even if Michael Jordan was an NBA Jam, which came out in 1993 shortly after I was still salty about one of these such events, I would not dare to have played as Michael Jordan. But that didn't make his absence any less baffling to me, nor anybody else who played the game. And of course, this being a midway game and there being so many secret characters in this game, lots of rumors flew around about different ways you could get Michael Jordan in NBA Jam. Logically, it would make absolutely no sense to hide the most famous basketball player to ever live as a secret character, the most secret character in the entire game, but we're beyond good brain logic at this point. This is the world of the 90s arcade. We're working on 100% gamer logic. And of course, by now, we all know that the real reason Michael Jordan wasn't in the game was licensing issues. Because of his deal with Nike, Michael Jordan had chosen to opt out of the NBA Players Association group license, which was an umbrella license that would allow them to use all of the NBA players. Essentially, Midway would have had to work out Michael Jordan's deal separately from the other players. And for a while, it seemed like that was what was going to happen. Things were moving forward with Michael Jordan in NBA Jam. And according to early development notes that I saw shared by NBA Jam the book on Twitter, he was even planned to be on the title screen. And in fact, according to some old footage, Michael Jordan was actually in the prototype that Midway used to pitch the game to the NBA. Here's some really early footage of Michael Jordan in the game. Programmers then place all these moving images in the game and control their actions to make it as realistic and responsive as possible. Unfortunately, they didn't ever actually come to an agreement and Michael Jordan had to be pulled from the game at the last minute, not making another video game appearance until the legendary Michael Jordan chaos in the Windy City. And of course, the rumors persisted that there was in fact a way to get Michael Jordan secretly in the game, but there was just no way. If Midway were to put in such a secret, they would open themselves up to a massive lawsuit. 
So no trace of Michael Jordan exists in the final game, not even hidden in the code like that WWF logo in Mortal Kombat 2. So then that's it, right? The end of the story, Michael Jordan NBA Jam just fell through and any possibility of him being in it is just out the window, right? Not exactly. Although this was thought to be the case for decades, in 2008, Mark Trammell, the lead developer of NBA Jam, did an interview with ESPN. And in this interview, there was a startling revelation about Michael Jordan's status in NBA Jam. Who was your favorite two-man team? The most interesting one was the team of Gary Payton and Michael Jordan. Payton didn't make the cut to be in the game, and of course, Jordan pulled himself out of the licensing of the NBA, so we had to pull him out of the game. But one day, I got a phone call from a distributor out on the West Coast who told me that Gary Payton was willing to pay whatever it costs to get into the game. So we told him what to do in terms of taking photographs, so he sent in photographs of himself and Jordan, saying, we want to be in the game, hook us up. So we actually did a special version of the game and gave both players all-star superstar stats. There are only a handful of these machines, but Jordan and Payton did end up being in one version of the game. It had previously been a known piece of trivia that Gary Payton really wanted to be an NBA Jam, and he had contacted Midway personally and asked to be included in the sequel, which he was, but at the time I guess nobody knew how deep this actually went. And in a later interview, Termel added that Ken Griffey Jr., the baseball player, also asked to be included and was put in this version of the game. Here's the pictures he sent Midway so that he could be digitized into NBA Jam. As far as anybody knows, there are only five of these machines that exist in the world. One is owned by Michael Jordan, one is owned by Ken Griffey Jr., and three are owned by Gary Payton, who has mentioned in the past that his kids grew up playing these machines. There were also rumors that a version of this machine traveled with the Bulls during that time, but there's no confirmation of that. This version of the game has never been released to the public in any form, legal or otherwise. However, it was rumored that this would be the version of the game included in the arcade 1UP machine. This rumor was fueled by a number of factors. For starters, a tweet by Arcade 1UP's licensing director, John Diamondon, said that they needed to acquire the rights for three players in the original NBA Jam. And this rumor was further fueled by a promo image that was tweeted by Arcade 1UP, showing what appears to be a different Bulls lineup from the original game. Not Horace Grant with his trademark goggles, but instead a mysterious bald man. However, the Arcade 1UP NBA Jam machine is out now, and there's no Michael Jordan. And although I wasn't able to verify this myself, a YouTuber, Toycade, who had covered this rumor as it was unfolding, stated that Arcade 1UP attempted to get the rights to Jordan, but were unable to secure a deal. And that may have been the best shot at getting to play an officially sanctioned version of what a lot of people have dubbed the Holy Grail edition of NBA Jam. But that's not to say that there's no shot. In a 2017 Reddit AMA, Mark Trammell fielded some questions about this version of the game. And you see, although only five Michael Jordan NBA Jam machines exist, that's not the only form the game exists in. That's funny. Yes, for sure I'm going to hit up my storage cabinet where I keep the old sets of EPROMs and hard drives for those games. Still have the source code and assets around too. He did have the best stats in the game. Any chance you could dump those EPROMs to the internet? Asking for a friend. I could. We'll try to dig up. He could, but he didn't. And to be honest, I have a feeling that if he did leak this ROM, he might have gotten himself into some trouble. I have no idea what the contracts and agreements surrounding this game look like, but it doesn't make much sense to open yourself up, potentially, to legal trouble just to satisfy the curiosity of some strangers on the internet. I think the most reasonable idea of how to get this game out to the public was presented by Tim Kitzrow, the announcer of NBA Jam, in an interview on Scoop B Radio back in 2019. So there is actually uh, you know, like four or five cabinets in the world that exist. I have, I'd love to ask Michael Jordan if he's still got his, uh, but Gary Payton's super excited. He said his son grew up, grew up playing it and uh, he loves it. So there you go. And maybe one day I've talked to Mark Trammell about seeing if we could uh, find out uh, legally how to release that holy grail, that version with Michael Jordan in it so that everybody could play it, see it, or at least uh, uh, get it into like the Hall of Fame. And there's some discussion, maybe the Hall of Fame is going to do some updating to include like a little exhibit of the effects of, you know, the video games 
uh, on on the uh, league and to you know have an old NBA Jam cabinet, and that would be great to have the Michael Jordan version there. You see, if you try to sell this version of NBA Jam, it's going to get tied up in all kinds of legal red tape every single time. But if you simply take it and put it on display at the Basketball Hall of Fame, you don't have the same problems. And we can finally see what is undoubtedly an important piece of video game and basketball history. But anyway, that's all for now. If you like this video, you'll probably also like my old video about Shawn Michaels and the WWF logo buried within Mortal Kombat 2. I'm out.